Uh, thanks, Tanya, and thanks, everybody, for coming to the last session on the last day. Um, as always, I'm humbled and inspired and exhausted after <laughs> Geo for Good and appreciate you sticking with it. Uh, so I'm, I'm Kim Fisher. I um, am uh, working for the Wildlife Conservation Society, and probably many of you know, we run the four zoos and the aquarium in New York, but we also are a globe-spanning organization, 60 different countries around the world, um, with a real emphasis on field monitoring and, and, and research. Uh, so our geospatial users tend to be um, not coders. They tend to do static maps, paper maps, kind of for reporting and, um, you know, uh, yeah, government reports kinds of things. Um, but that's, that's changing uh, because of things like Earth Engine, the, the still um, awesome power of the, the data and the API, and particularly these, these new GUIs apps that are um, coming out to make it uh, possible to create tools for our, our field staff. Um, and, and the other thing I think that's changing is, is, I mean, everybody's been referring to the SDGs, but um, I think seeing all these data in a common web browser framework um, sort of encourages everybody to think beyond, you know, 13, 14, and 15, or whatever it is a conservation organization thinks they work on, to really realize that they're all kind of, it's all part of one, one world, right? Um, and to, yeah, report on a global rather than a national stage. So I'm just going to go through a couple of apps that, and, and projects that we have been doing recently, are doing. Um, uh, within WCS using Earth Engine, uh, the first one is is my my, col uh, my colleague Adam Dunk Duncan, by the way, yeah, uh, who some of you probably know, um, who has created this this tool with the URL in the upper right there. That's that's live. Um, it's focused on Myanmar, but um, he just kind of has been doing this in his off time, like for fun, in the last few years. It's not part of his remit, um, uh, but it's it's uh, it's a thin wrapper around Earth Engine to allow our landscape folks to do the kinds of things that they very commonly need to do, just clip and ship kind of functionality. I want the latest, you know, satellite images. I want, I'm gonna do a, a simple composite classification, et cetera. So this is, this is proving very popular and um, you can see how this would be pretty easy to replicate and scale across all of our landscapes. So that's, that's happening. Um, the second thing is not yet live, but um, is going to be released next week at the UN climate meeting. Um, and this is a global forest integrity metric. Um, and the idea here is, uh, and you, again, you can see the, the, the UI there the, on the, on the, with the buttons on the top. The idea is to um, take the uh, UMD forest data and kind of um, synthesize that with a bunch of anthropogenic layers, human, human footprint layers. Um, to get a index or a metric of um, forest intactness, so the areas that we're trying to protect critters and wild places, um, how is the forest doing? So a side-by-side -side sort of comparison of kind of what we're trying to add to the story of, of just where the forest is losing. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's coming next week. Um, so then that is then um, uh, Eric and I are working with Adam to... Uh, refine that to do a, fi finally, do a um, updent, uh, update of the human footprint, um, originally from 2002, um, which probably most of you are familiar with, going, trying to measure the wildness in every place on the terrestrial surface from most wild to least wild, um, and is, uh, you know, basically a, just a simple weighted sum of the, the various anthropogenic layers. Anyway, this was updated in 2016, and we have a website, wcshumanfootprint.org, which has some simple um, sort of uh, web apps to compare the 1993 and 2009 human footprint. Uh, but again, this was done manually, like three years worth of work, desktop um, uh, work, um, and, and very important, showing the way that the human footprint is growing, but not as fast as population and GDP, and not obviously in a, the same way everywhere. Um, so there's some sort of cause for optimism. But anyway, this is still this is still sort of the, the old way. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is create like what we're calling human, foot, human footprint three across the world. And you can see Adam's tool for Myanmar here already has um, basically the parts of the human footprint which are part of the forest integrity metric. 
um, uh, baked in with, you can see little sliders here for the different drivers, and you can kind of create your own human footprint based on what you think is important to measure human impact in your area um, using this, this tool. So what we want to do is kind of make that available and, and calculate it for the whole world as often as possible, i.e. as often as the underlying data change. So using uh, a lot of OSM data, uh, take that into Earth Engine, use other publicly available assets so we don't maintain them ourselves, um, and then, uh, yeah, automate <laughs> the calculation of these things, uh, which I'll, I'll get to. And then the fourth uh, project, which is going to depend on that, is an update of the Tiger Conservation Landscape uh, analysis from 2005, which is itself um, an update of the TCU analysis in, in 1995. Um, both of these were, were, were great, but they, again, took huge amounts of work, and that work can't easily be duplicated. These um, 2005 uh, scripts are all in, in, in old AMLs, if anybody remembers what those are, the old Esri scripting language. Um, it's basically useless now. So I'm going to try to update that. Again, in the cloud, Earth Engine, um, and again, make it uh, update um, the landscapes themselves, not the impact on the landscapes, but actually change where the tiger habitat is uh, on a semi-automated basis. Yeah, so a near real-time monitoring system. We have this grant from NASA now, and we're working with partners at WWF, Panthera, um, other government organizations, uh, trying to create this, this system, which will follow largely the same sort of conceptual logic as we're thinking of it now um, for creating where tiger habitat is. So a combination of the observations from our field staff and that of our partners, um, the kind of structural habitat, remotely sensed habitat um, from the UMD folks, uh, and then this human footprint stuff. And we use some, uh, basically the same rules that we did before about patch size and connectivity, uh, and then create maps and reports, not any individual tiger observations, everybody's very sensitive about that, but um, summaries uh, by country, protected area, and ecoregion that are kind of a web app version of the old maps from 2005, which should be directly copy and paste for country reporting on SDG 15. That's the goal. Uh, so yeah, this sort of the, the mission in order to s automate this is to take these boxes and arrows from the original analysis and turn them into this. And you'll notice that these uh, tasks here, these tasks here are not anything about tigers. This is just a screenshot from this extremely helpful um, introductory medium post in the lower right uh, about something called Apache Airflow, which is um, a very powerful and complex workflow manager, task manager. Um, and the idea is to uh, instantiate every one of the computational steps in uh, Airflow that is required to calculate either human footprint or tiger habitat, uh, and then only run the tasks that are necessary on any, in any given uh, instance um, based on what has been updated in its inputs. So if the lights at night data set or whatever has updated, but none of the structural habitat or ob tiger observation stuff is updated, we would run just the branch that is any, any calculations downstream from that calculation, but not all the other things. And so, yeah, that's, that's the goal. Um, there's a Google kind of Airflow as a service product, Cloud Composer, um, which we're hoping to kind of use to leverage this. And so the idea is to take all these incredibly powerful Google uh, uh, cloud products and talk to Earth Engine, OSM, et cetera, et cetera, and, uh, and, and produce this on a regular basis. And yeah, so if we could do that for tigers, um, the idea is that we could do that for other species. So if we could have, you know, the, how the habitat for any given species is doing over time, um, then you could maybe start to produce a kind of index of species habitat, Google Nature Index, let's say, um, and uh, and then you know report that out the same way we do the Pat Jones. So that's the idea. That's what we got. Is uh, my 
email and information is there. So.